The horrors of the First World War are measured in millions of lives. This is a familiar story known to many, but there is one important story that largely remains untold. My name's Tim Grady and I'm Professor of History here at the University of Chester. Today, what I want to do is to introduce you to this city, but also to an aspect of my own research. And what this is going to show is global histories that exist all around us. Let's start though by having a look at this war memorial right here. The memorial itself was erected after the First World War and it was dedicated to those from Chester who died in the conflict. This makes it a really personal site for the friends and families who lost loved ones in the First World War. The actual names of the war dead are to be found on the other side of the square from the memorial in Chester's Town Hall. In the main foyer is a large plaque that proudly lists each name under the title of Chester citizens who fell in the Great War. Both memorials commemorate Chester's war dead, but what you won't find is any mention of the hundreds of other people from the war who died here in Chester. These lost souls, I think, also deserve to be remembered. Trying to unravel the hidden human history of any place is certainly not an easy task. To understand Chester's other victims of the war, we need to actually go over the old D bridge here. And it's here in the picturesque suburb of Hambridge that we start to find some answers. Overly Cemetery is a wonderful example of a 19th century park burial ground. Marvellously Gothic and atmospheric too. Near the entrance you'll find all the kind of familiar sights of a Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery. We've got the Great Cross. And then there's the neatly tended rows of the headstones from the war dead themselves. However, I'm particularly concerned with those who died in the war but were never a part of this landscape. During the First World War, almost 3,000 prisoners, of soldiers and civilians, died in Britain. Two of these men were buried in this cemetery and they've got their own story to tell. Walter Zich was a cook who had come to England in 1910, so four years before the war started. He married an Englishwoman, they had a child, and they settled down in Manchester. Tragically though, Walter Zich died from appendicitis in only the third month of the war. Far less is known about Rudolf Noach. What we do know is that he was a soldier who had been captured in France and then brought up to Cheshire. As fate would have it, he also died from appendicitis, but in November 1919, so after the war had actually ended. But the mystery is how did these two men end up in Chester? Both were taken ill in POW camps near the city and then brought to Chester Infirmary, which is where they died. Thanks to research by our students, we now know a lot more about these local camps. One camp was just across the Welsh border at Queen's Ferry, and this is where Walter Zich was taken when he was arrested in Manchester at the outbreak of the conflict. Rudolf Noach was a prisoner in Hamforth in East Cheshire. This was a large camp for soldiers who had been captured on the Western Front. But could we shed any more light on their story? My research led me to an unassuming area of grass in Overly Cemetery. According to the burial records, we're now on the very spot in which Walter Zich was buried. But there's, there's absolutely nothing here. And the same is true of Noach over the other side of the cemetery. So where are they? The simple answer is that their mortal remains were moved in the 1960s to a brand new German cemetery 
60 miles from here on Cannock Chase in Staffordshire. But what makes this tale even more puzzling is that neither man is now recorded in Cannock Cemetery. So if they're not here in Chester and they're not in Cannock, then where are they? The story of these two men tells us a lot about wartime death. Unlike the neat memorials and the remembrance rituals, the realities were far more confusing and far more complex. Their deaths also remind us that wartime loss touched every corner of Europe and the world. Now, Chester's hidden history of wartime loss is certainly not unique. Most British cities can reveal a similar history of war and of loss. But as historians, it's important we turn our gaze to these often overlooked margins of humanity, particularly after the devastation of conflict. If we do this, we'll better understand, I think, that the two world wars were not just British conflicts, they were global wars. One thing history tells us when remembering the war dead is who are we also forgetting? 